There's another guy in town that says, and we don't forget every day we got these four thousand five hundred dollar new Kias. If I can't sell it to you, I'm just going to give it to you. And he gives it to you every day. I called him up and said, listen, you know, I have an old car I want to trade in that, uh, for that $4,500 Kia and apply that $3,000 Texas Clean Air Act. Well, that'll be $7,000. But the car was only $4,500. I'm giving you $3,000 trade in the state of Texas. And yet now I still owe you $7,000. Yeah, we ain't got any more of those. Now, here's my point. Not that all car dealers are liars and scumbags. No. One of these dealers is obsessed with Six, with, with service, the other was obsessed with cheating you and making sales no matter what. Lying means nothing to them. They're not going to be around in 10 years. They're not going to be around in 40 years. They don't have repeat customers because they tricked them and lied and tricked them and made them sign up for insurance and stuff and other things and to get their underside painted to actually have air in their tires when they bought it. Instead of being obsessed with providing the best service possible. If you run a car dealership and you're obsessed with the best service possible, if you're an insurance salesman, you're obsessed with giving these clients the best coverage possible so that nothing could happen to their house, their car, or their health that they wouldn't be covered with. If you're obsessed with that, if you understand, listen, I want you to know I care. I'm obsessed with helping you get the best insurance for your family because I care about you. Not... I'm obsessed with selling you an insurance policy and I can't wait to go talk to the next guy and I don't care how many times I say no you're going to buy it because I'm going to trick you into doing it. Do you see what I'm pointing at? You can take that obsessive mental attitude and apply it to your business by hiring people and by teaching them and training them how to use obsessions for service. For service. And then they'll make the sales. Never worrying about the commissions. Worrying about the service. Worrying about giving the person more than they ask for. Making them feel wonderful. Making them feel great. If you're obsessed with that, you're going to make a lot more happen to achieve the great things in your life. Was it uh, Andrew Carnegie or one of them said, I'd rather have 1% of the efforts of 1,000 people than 1,000% of the efforts of myself? That's what an obsession can do. He was obsessed with hiring as many people as he could and giving them an opportunity to change their life. And that's why he became the world's biggest steel magnet. He became the biggest, and then he started uh, one of the world's biggest philanthropical foundations. He was obsessed with helping people to change their lives. Not was obsessed with making steel. He was obsessed with helping people make their lives better. If you'll apply the OMA principle to your business, if you'll apply it when you're hiring someone, when you talk to them, don't just say, fill out the application, you're hired. Let me tell you what our philosophy is here. We're obsessed with giving people the best service when they walk into our Best Buy. We treat them like they own the store, and we're here to give them the best product the best service at the best price that we could possibly have that, that they can afford. And if they can't afford it, we're going to help them with the financing. You'll have nothing but great employees that will do a great job because they'll also be obsessed with the service. And when they're obsessed with serving, when they're obsessed with service, you're going to have nothing but great things happen for you in your life and in your business. I know a man in Dallas. I know a man in Dallas in a band called Bill Tillman. Bill Tillman always gives his best when he performs. I've never seen him perform where he didn't give his best. I've seen him perform in front of thousands of people that were screaming and he worked his tail off. I've seen him perform in, 15, in front of 15 people and he worked his tail off. He worked just as hard in front of six as he worked in front of 2,000. And that's why he is a successful person and in a great band and is going to continue to be a successful band leader and songwriter and singer. He is obsessed with doing the best. A great actor or someone who's obsessed, doesn't matter who's in the crowd, does his best work all the time. You know, his obsession to be great is not just to be great in front of 2,000 people. His obsession to be great is to be great in front of six people. Think about the other people who have become successful in what they did and what they did to get the way they, and, and how they got that way. Do you, can you think of, do you think they got that way because they maintained a positive mental attitude? Do you think they got that way because they maintained a positive mental attitude? Or was it because they kept pursuing their goal and their obsession no matter what obstacles got in the way? Likely or not, they faced a number of failures and rejections along the way. And yet they refused to let these negative efforts make them quit. They learned from them and they stiffened their resolve and they moved on, but they never quit. They never stopped trying until one day the opportunity finally knocked at the door and they were ready to meet it. They were obsessed with being ready to meet it and they were prepared when it came and they achieved their success. Obsessive mental attitude is the only formula that's for success that works every time. It is the power used 
by all of those who have become successful in their lives. I have spent most of the last 25 years researching the lives and the forces of some of the most successful people in the world and found that they, what they all have in common is that they were obsessed with their work. They were obsessed with becoming successful. I spent years researching the proponents of the PMA and their success theories such as affirmative thinking, EST, positive thinking, possibility thinking, see faith and dozen more. And all of these success theories are great for getting the reader pumped up and positive, but they never cause the reader to take the actions necessary to achieve their success. It is simply impossible to achieve success by following positive mental attitude programs that don't keep you positive long enough to achieve it. If the positive mental attitude books worked, why are there so many of them? If the first one you read gave you the correct story, the correct scoop, why would never one who read it be rich? There would be no reason for another positive mental attitude book to be written is. If one of them worked, then that would be all that needed to be written. You only need one book that tells you 2 plus 2 is 4, it works, and so forth and so on. A positive mental attitude books, there are thousands of them. There's hundreds of thousands of them. There's hundreds of thousands of people that go to lectures. And they all just use a little bit different approach, but the same philosophy. What you need to see successful is a positive mental attitude. But my entire point is that positive mental attitude is impossible to achieve and maintain. You can't stay positive. OMA is entirely possible to achieve and impossible to lose. If I showed you the power of success that was impossible to achieve and maintain, and then I showed you a power of success that was easy to achieve and impossible to lose, which one would you actually choose to follow? Yet thousands of people keep continue to pour money into positive mental attitude that doesn't work. If I can get you with this book to find out what your obsession is in your life, you will not need to read another book ever. You will not need to, need to attend any lectures, buy any tapes. You'll have an obsession. And once you're obsessed, you will possess. Nothing will be able to stop you. Let me equate the plethora of PMA books to something I'm very familiar with, the study of Zen, because of my martial arts background. First, let me point out, I study Zen because of my martial arts background. I'm a master in martial arts, 10th degree black belt, author of 42 books and 35 DVDs, but I am a Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ and the truth of His salvation. I study Zen for the martial arts aspect because it really helps you to control and calm your mind. But almost every book written about Zen says this, Zen cannot be transmitted with words. Words are like cow dung. The written, even spoken word is an illusion, a dream, worthy of nothing. And yet there are probably 5,000 books written on Zen by Zen scholars who make sure that you get the point that all the books on Zen are worthless. It would seem that one book telling you this was a worthless subject should do it, but it's not true. Here are the followers of Zen here for the followers in is the ultimate Zen book. It only has one chapter and you'll never need to read another chapter after reading the first book on this ultimate book on Zen. Words, whether spoken or written, will only lead you in the wrong direction. If you are trying to find Tao by reading books on Zen, you're wasting your time. No exception. That's my book on Zen. What? I'd like to read a little bit more about that. Tell me again how it's all worthless. If I was the leading authority, in, if the leading authority on Zen has written and sold millions of books and, and, and millions of tapes and stuff, and you know, what, what should people think? I don't know, because I'm not the leading authority on Zen, but the no leading authority on Zen has ever suggested that you read his book. Because the words are worthless, but yet they keep writing them because people keep wanting to read. Give me more of those books that tell me everything I'm reading is worthless. Does that make sense? There's always some slight suggestion that you might be about to read something that will in fact lead them to the Tao and give them the secret of happiness, the secret of success, the secret of life. But the real point is there have been hundreds of books around for thousands of years written about Zen and about PMA and they don't work. Let's suppose I wrote a book on how to fix a car, a book on auto repair. And at the end of the book, I suggested that you attend a, a lecture on how to uh, fix a car, read 40 more books, buy some tapes, write it down on a mantra, and, and just keep reading, 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 and write about how to fix a car. And five minutes after you read it, you got everything you do, and then you walked out there and you didn't even know how to open the hood. Would you think that all the books that you just read about fixing the car were crap, or would you think there was a problem with you? And it sounds simple. Obviously, you say these books are crap, but yet people buy PMA book after PMA book, and every one of them 
doesn't work in their life, and yet they continue to say, well, what's wrong is me. It's not the fact that I can't stay positive for five minutes after reading the book. It must be there's something wrong with me. You know, if I read a book on how to fix a car, and, it, and, I, and I couldn't remember the next day for five minutes how to fix the car, wouldn't that book be a failure? This is crap. These books don't work. They want my money back. You say, I don't want a book on a car that doesn't teach me how to fix a car. But yet it doesn't happen in real life. Millions of people all across the world continue to read books and buy books and tapes and attend lectures day after day about how to get rich using positive mental attitude and success, motivation and stuff, and every one of them fails. And they all arrive at the same conclusion. There's something wrong with me. I didn't follow the program. And the program doesn't work. You can't follow the program. It's like the liberal Democratic Party with their programs. You know, we need to poverty to pour another hundred trillion dollars into the poverty thing. We don't want to educate them. To get them out of there. We want to keep doing things that don't work. So it's the same thing with the PMA books. They keep telling you plans on how to succeed, how to succeed, and if you don't follow them, it's not their fault, it's your fault. One negative thought will prevent this positive mental attitude book from working. Well, I'm here to save you hundreds, thousands of dollars in a lifetime of frustration. You can't follow the plans and activities in the PMA book because it doesn't work. The authors can't follow the plans and activities in the PMA book because it doesn't work. Positive attracts negative. No one can stay positive all the time. If you're relying on positive mental attitude to succeed in life, you're sure you're going to fail. You're doomed to failure. Only when you work and act with an obsession, with an obsession mental attitude, and only when you pursue your goals as an obsession will you always do enough work and have enough tenacity, persistence, and courage and drive to get it done no matter what. You will always have the power to win by pursuing something with an obsessive mental attitude. Stop being fooled by the positive mental attitude, people. If I told you a stove was hot and you touched it, I'll bet you wouldn't touch it again when you got burned. And you would probably tell all your friends and your children and everybody, you know, hey, don't touch that stove, it's hot. And in a few years, everybody around would you know, would know, don't touch a hot stove, it would burn you. But if I wrote a book and I interviewed uh, 500 of the richest people in America and they all gave me their secret of being rich and I somehow thought that secret was positive mental attitude and you read it and uh, it worked, wouldn't you go and tell all your friends and they'd read it and it would work and everybody in America would be millionaires? Why wouldn't they teach it in the schools? If all you need to be successful is to be positive, why wouldn't they teach it in the schools? Soon everybody would become rich and famous and happy and the whole world would be great. There would be no more war and no more disease. It doesn't work. Instead, we get book after book, lecture after lecture, tape after tape, policy after policy, program after policy, with people doing the same thing that never worked, that didn't work, that won't work, that can't work, that's doomed to failure. Think and grow rich instead of working your butt off and getting rich. And so what happens? People just stay poor, frustrated, and confused. The truth is, the authors of PMA books were paid by the number of people. If the authors of PMA books were paid by the number of people who became successful after reading the book, they'd all be broke. They'd all starve to death. What's missing in all these books is the glue that enables you to follow the plan, to make your vision come alive, and to make something happen after you start reading the book. To do something with the feelings and the positive emotions that you have when you started out, you have to follow those feelings and emotions with a positive mental attitude. The missing factor in all these PMA books is obsessive mental attitude. Only when you become obsessed with your goal will you be able to achieve your goal. And only then you won't, and then you won't have to read any more books on achieving goals and following the purpose in your life because you will have achieved it. Let me say this again. You know, I have nothing against the Democrats. My grandmother is a Democrat. You know, I have nothing against the Liberal Party. They all have great intentions, but their programs don't work. They've never worked. Never. Socialism has never worked anywhere in the world. And yet people say, you know why it didn't work is that we didn't tax enough of the rich people to give enough money for everybody to not be poor. Communism has never worked. Well, you know why they say, we you know why communism doesn't work? Because the U.S. boycotted Russia. Or boycotted uh, Cuba. Oh, you mean the country that was practicing capitalism boycotted the country that was practicing a failed system that if you didn't shoot the people, they would leave the country. That people jump into the ocean and try to swim to Florida to get out of communist Cuba whenever uh, that fat so I forget his name, now I wrote the book saying that Cuba has the best health care and the best education system in the world. Why are people jumping from America to swim to Cuba? And yet, time after time after time, again, we're told to pump more money into programs that don't work, that have never worked, that can't ever work, that are guaranteed to fail. Because the people that are running them 
are trying to make things work with feeling good by being positive instead of actually making people obsessed with working hard to become successful. Work hard with an obsession, you'll always make things your possession. Don't live in a dream world. Don't live in a fairy tale world of stuff that can't possibly happen that will never come true. Work in a world where you're obsessed to be successful and you will always be successful.